Did you know that Pinterest is a powerful way to drive free traffic to your website? Our guest is a Pinterest marketing and Pinterest ads expert, and she's going to show us how to leverage Pinterest to grow our business. Yes! Stay tuned for the Startup Life Live Show. Let's glow. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Startup Life Live Show. I'm your host, Andy Lyons, startup champion to first-time founders. And after raising four businesses of my own, I now show newly minted first-time business owners how to sleep through the night and stop sleeping like babies, right? Waking up every two hours crying. And I do that by giving them some peace of mind. And I call it Andy-licious advice. And it's core business strategies for your startup delivered with high enthusiasm, inspiration, joy, and a lot of fun. Because come on, we can't be serious all the time about our startups, right? Thank you for carving out time to tune in and up your founder game while cheering on a fellow founder. And for those of you watching now or via replay, I would be so grateful for your support of the show with a like on this video, wherever you're watching it, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook or Twitch. And if you're on Twitter, yay, hit it with a retweet. That would be so great. And those of you who are watching from YouTube, I'd be so grateful for a subscribe and a click on the bell icon. I mean, gosh, that's just a huge win for this humble host. I'm so excited to introduce you to our guest, Elisa Meredith. I've been following Elisa for years and love, love, love her advice. And I love how she shares her advice. And she's a popular speaker and teacher on the topics of Pinterest marketing and Pinterest ads. And she's run a digital agency since 2005. And she's the product specialist and marketing manager for Tailwind. Do you guys know about Tailwind? It's this wonderful app that really helps you manage your presence across the visual web. And when I say visual, I mean Pinterest and Instagram. So we'll learn a little bit more about that. Alisa has a special gift for the Startup Live live audience. It's a free video course called Pinterest Quick Start. Begin marketing on Pinterest in one hour. Oh my gosh. Stay tuned for all the details on that fab freebie. Okay, now where's my pen? I got to get my pen over here because I need to take notes. Are you ready to take notes? Yay. So let's welcome Elisa to the show. Welcome to the Startup Life Live show, Elisa. Hey, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should have gotten those little noisemakers before this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. Someday StreamYard will have that cloud cra clapping mm -hmm. audio that we'll be able to play, right? That'd be fun. Oh, that would be great. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody My tuning pleasure. in live. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to remind you, we love to showcase and celebrate you business owners, you first time founders, you seasoned founders. So be sure to pop your business name, URL and a one liner because sometimes your business name doesn't really say what, what you're doing. So if you throw in that one liner, we'll be able to go, oh, no kidding. Yay. And we'll be able <laughs> to then, idea. I got it, you yeah. know, and celebrate you right up here on the big screen. Um, so, you know, definitely do that. I'm hailing right now today from Boston. Where are you hailing, goddess Elisa? <laughs> I am in Wilmington, North Carolina. So, Way so southern much. coast, maybe an hour and 15 minutes from Myrtle Beach. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I got to say hi to one of my favorite fans. You know, Mariel, I was just thinking about you. Are you down in Mexico still enjoying the fun and the sun? Oh, my gosh, because you don't want to be back here with all the snow that we've got here. Um, Mariel is a makeup artist to the superstars, or as we say oh. here in Boston, the superstars. <laughs> yes. and, and she gets them looking great. And she, you know, she does weddings as well. And she's just wonderful. I'm so happy you tuned in. And then the woman who makes me look so great with all my graphics, it's Nikki Pasquier from the Cotswolds in England. I Hi, Nikki. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Pinterest doesn't hate you. <laughs> that is so funny. 
buddy, Nikki. I, listen, I, we all know that I, I've got to show this for just a second, okay. folks. Here's my, um, here's Andy's most recent Pinterest. You know, I've got 1700 followers. I have zero idea why I have 673,000 monthly views. And that goes up. Sometimes it's 500, sometimes it's 800,000. And that means I, that people are seeing your content, whether it's because you pinned it or someone else did. That's and, that's great. And news. I don't even know anybody who works at Pinterest. <laughs> that is not a requirement. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I got to bring up Mike Hendley here. Mike, uh, Elisa, he you will really need to follow him on Instagram. He's an artist, and he will start through an IG story. He'll just start drawing. He's amazing, oh, and God. shares beautiful, beautiful work. Okay, so I'm really glad to know you're still in Mexico, Mariel. That's oh, so excited. And we're glad that you're here too. And yes, see now, Eric, this is Eric has a company called Media Prepared, uh, Elisa. And that's so that when someone shoves the mic in your face, you know what you need to say and you're ready, <laughs> right? And as a founder, <laughs> yeah, because as a founder, you have so much stuff going on. You got to, you know, you got to have that all ironed out because. We want that for you. We want press for you guys. Great to see you, Eric. All right. <laughs> um, I, I get caught up in the conversations in the common threads. You know, it's, folks. Fun it's, over too. <laughs> it's so much fun to see everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. I'm curious first, before we get into all the good Pinterest scoop, and we will, I'd love to know, Elisa, if you could share with folks, you know, because a digital marketer from 2005, I mean, I had a dot com from ninety eight to two thousand, and then a food business. You know, I start launched in two thousand two. Digital marketing, you know, people weren't really that good at it. How did you <laughs> land into the digital marketing world? What well, drew you to that? I mean, it was an accident to start with. So it was in two thousand, around two thousand, I started in digital marketing um, for a company that made phone systems or or refurbished phone systems for companies. And if you've ever read a big company phone system manual, they're, they're terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they're hard to read. They don't make a lot Absolutely. of sense. So um, I had the job of, of setting up our e-com website. And then when that was all set up, I thought, okay, what am I going to do now? Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to rewrite some of these manuals in a way that is useful and post them online for people to use. So it's like old school content marketing way, way back in 2000. Yeah. Um, so I got into that and then I got into website design and then, uh, I joined Facebook to play Scrabble and then ended up <laughs> as partner in uh, scalable social media. It was an agency that then became a HubSpot partner agency. And then I found Pinterest and I just got sucked in because it was so amazing and could deliver results like I had never seen before. That's what I was always looking for, were those and, astounding results. And I finally found them. And, and refresh our memories because I remember when Pinterest launched and I was like, ah, not another platform I've got to learn. And so, and I waited and, and waited till someone started doing as they, as one does, you see it with Clubhouse right now, everybody starts saying, how to use Pinterest for business. Right. And I said, okay, I'll start paying attention to that. But what, you know, what drew you to this platform? Well, I think that was the first thing was a curiosity. Okay. I know mm -hmm. how I'm using this. How does this transfer to become something useful for business? So I wrote an ebook, which I, I need to go look for it because I'm sure it's embarrassingly horrible <laughs> how to use Pinterest for business. And I, um, somebody found it, at least one person, and emailed me and said, well, how do you do this and how do you do that? And so I tried to walk him through it. And he finally said, well, can I just hire you to do this? And I thought, oh, yes, that's how good a salesperson I am, that someone has to beg me to take money to do this. Um, yeah, so I, I got into that. And what I really love about it is the mixture and the challenge. So it's like, it's very visual. It has a lot to do with SEO, but it's not as complicated as Google SEO. It's, it has a lot to do with psychology and understanding people and their behaviors. And that just to me is like the perfect combination of challenge and possibility. So it, it is still that way. And, and so still the visual. Still yeah. And for those of you who are not on Pinterest, one of the things I thought was always attractive about Pinterest was that you didn't have to people. Yes, I call it the introverts network for that very reason, because I, I am on Instagram, but 
you'll rarely see my face there because my life is just not that exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but on Pinterest, that is that is my time and my place. That's right. And I've, I've been known to get lost. I actually have to set a timer, everybody, mm -hmm. because I have one board and delicious autos because I love to post like my eye oh. candy for high end <laughs> automobiles. Um, but then I do a lot of private things, you know, my, oh, I want to decorate my home that way, or I got to try out that recipe mm -hmm. or what has become really handy for me has been the ability to capture something somebody was talking about, whether it was raising capital or valuation for your business or a handy funnel piece of information, whatever, and pop it onto my Andy Licious advice for startup founders board, mm -hmm. because then I can go back review all of that and say, oh, let me reshare this. Let me go and put this out into the world because it was really good content. So it's almost like a, a, a placeholder for certain content that other people can certainly go visit those boards and scroll down. But I have to tell you with my prior business, <clears throat> may it rest in peace, bring back desire, so much fun. <laughs> um, that's when I noticed the SEO feature. So. I mean, I could not believe the traffic that came to my site from Pinterest. And again, I did nothing. I spoke to no one. I liked, I and I, I think we were able to like back then, but I yeah, would save and, and I would add original content, but that was it. It just seemed well, effortless. I mean, it's really not, there's not that much more to it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the so. wonderful part about it. <laughs> so if any of you are on Pinterest, please let me know. Throw the, your URL for that. I'll put mine in too so we can follow each other and share with each other on Pinterest. But let's get into Meredith. What I called, she asked me, well, what do you want me to talk about? And I said, well, everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then, of course, I had to ask for a side of SEO. You got because, it. Because <laughs> yeah, we need to know how that works. So take it away, Elisa. And right. mm -hmm. um, as soon as you share your screen, I'll pop it in there. Oh, good, Nikki. You've got all your board for your wedding ideas. The wedding that should have happened already. Oh, no. <laughs> <As of COVID. laughs> it's coming. That's so frustrating. It's happening to a lot of people. <laughs> all right. Can you see my screen? I sure can. So okay. let's add it to the stream. Okay. And I will let you, I'll take myself out and let you take us on. Everybody ready? Here we go. Yeah, and just so you know, feel free to ask questions. And, and I've told Andy, break in, please. It's nice to know that you're still there. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and listening. So um, this is everything you need to know to succeed on Pinterest. Yay. If you pair this with the quick start, you'll be good to go. Um, okay. We also have a bunch of data studies that we did in the last few weeks, and I'm going to be supplementing with that information because it's very cool. So let me pull up my notes so I make sure I don't miss any. Okay. So if you're here, you're at least curious about Pinterest, but there are people who are just dedicated to Pinterest and Pinterest marketing is hugely impactful for their business. So why would that be? Well, it is a number two social refer and the fastest growing refer of social traffic. It's not really social, but it gets lumped in there. Uh, so what do we want? We want traffic. So Pinterest is awesome for that. Pinterest users are growing. So 459 million monthly active users. Uh, the pandemic was a real boon as far as growing Pinterest users for obvious reasons. We, we all need to make our homes more comfortable, find things to do to amuse children, etc. <laughs> The searches that are going on on Pinterest are astounding, right? So usually people aren't finding you by by browsing your boards and looking at your pins. Generally, they find you on the home feed or they find you in search. Two billion monthly searches. We want to get our content into those searches. Hold and on. Those, two billion? Two billion monthly searches. I just had to pop in everybody because that's... <laughs> that's a big number. That's a big <laughs> Okay, so some is starting to explain why I see so many views. Okay, back to you. Yeah, yeah. And the really cool thing for a startup business is that 97% of those searches are not branded. So instead of searching for, um, let's see, like Slack software, they're searching for um, communication software, or they're searching for tax advice. They're very open to finding a new solution. And that new solution could be you just as well as anybody else. And people are buying from Pinterest. So people are buying 
services, they're buying products. 83% of pinners have made a purchase based on something they saw from a brand on Pinterest, which is pretty cool. Now Pinterest, if you're following what Pinterest as a company says, you'll know they're, they're talking a lot about um, fresh content, new ideas. However, if you have really great content that's still relevant, your content can last a very, very long time. So here's a blog post from 2015. Um, here's a pin from 2018, and we're still getting 139 visits to the site from this pin and this blog post that are ancient, right? Because it's still useful to people. So if you can get in that super useful, super relevant category, your content can last forever, especially when you compare to a tweet or a Facebook post. Myself back in, I got to make sure, oh, geez, this is where I need, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I wanted to make sure I had the right screen going. Okay, oh, Lisa, okay. back to you. We're good. Okay. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so who you can expect to reach on Pinterest, 80% of U.S. moms, one in two millennials, 40% of U.S. millennial men, 76% of U.S. millennial women. Gen Z is growing astronomically as a demographic on Pinterest. I, it's surprising, um, but Pinterest has reported it, and I've seen it myself, so here we can see it. This is uh, something you can get in your own account. If you look under analytics and you look at uh, Pinterest audience insights, you're going to see your audience, but you're also going to be able to look at the Pinterest audience as a whole. And what we can see is that this younger demographic is really dominant on Pinterest. Um, and also female, right? We kind of know that, right? There are many more men, uh, women than men. But now as Pinterest is growing, uh, men are making up about 50% of the signups. So they're starting to catch on a bit. And what they're looking for is really no surprise, home decor, DIY and crafts, art, entertainment, education, food and drinks, women's fashion. And if you're thinking, well, that is not me, that's okay. Uh, one industry that, that's not in this top, but it still has considerable um, coverage on Pinterest is the finance industry. So you'll see a lot of banking advertisements. Um, and for our audience for Pinterest, our audience in particular is extremely interested in finance. And I imagine for many of you, it would be very similar. Yeah, so they, they are there. Yeah. That's really good to know. And how about realtors? Realtors? Um, I put realtors are tricky because they're local. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. a good point. Yep. 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 But maybe if you had an Airbnb. Yes. Oh, travel. Yeah. Travel is like the next, if you scroll down yeah. a little bit, <laughs> it's, <right> there. it's <laughs> huge on Pinterest. And I think if this were not now, if this were not 2021 in the middle of a pandemic, travel would be higher, yeah. but it just, it really does reflect what is going on in the world right now. Right. Um, okay. So cool. Yeah, yeah, the, the insights you can find in Pinterest are astounding. We'll get into some of the other cool ones too. Uh, so what they are looking for, um, we were talking about how, uh, you know, Instagram is kind of about the selfie, but Pinterest is more like, more about yourself, right? So it's about your life and how to become a better you. So what they're looking for are solutions and inspiration. So if you can give them that, doesn't matter what industry you're in, you can succeed. They're also generally on mobile, which is important to consider when you're designing your pins to make sure that they are easy to decipher on mobile. So let's talk about your profile. Maybe you have one. You definitely want to make sure you have a business account. There are many reasons for that. Um, one of which is the analytics analytics that you'll have access to. Right. Um, and and yeah. you, you have to go through the usual process of, and you're probably going to bring this up, right? But uh, of getting your, your website tagged as a business or approved as a business. Um, you just have to convert to a business account. Okay. It's, and that's the link there. If you want to, if you need to do that, it's pinterest.com slash business slash convert. But once you do that, it opens up some other possibilities, which are really handy, such as claiming your website. So claiming your website is, is kind of, You've probably done this for other sites. It's just a little bit of code that you put in the back end or you send to your website person and they can put it in the back end. But the reason it's so important is here's an example of someone who has claimed their website. So Penn and Posh um, claimed their website and their 
their um, their name is going to show up anytime. Oh wait, no, this is the opposite. Okay, <laughs> so lovefamilyhealth.com is the creator of this pin and the creator of this content. Pen and Posh has saved the pin, and now their name and their follow button are showing up. That's because Love Family Health has okay. Not I'm going to put this in a bigger screen. Wow. Yeah. Let me get rid of the banner too. So that's not distracting us on that one. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's fascinating. Okay. I had no idea. Yeah. And then on the right, you can see what happens if you do claim your site. So Vicky saved this pin, but it belongs to Brie at Go Rattle the Stars. So now it is showing Brie and her follow button which is what you want for your content. <laughs> wow. And why do you want that? Because, because for one thing, you're going to gain engaged followers. So, yeah. I mean, do followers count? I mean, it depends. If you're, if you're an influencer and you're looking for influencer deals, of course they matter. If you're not, they still matter. <laughs> and here's why I say that. Um, we did several studies uh, and we did find that, Right. We had a study of 2 million accounts that pinned both in November and January of this past year. Um, of those 2 million accounts, those with the larger follower counts enjoy a higher number of saves on their pin, which means that their content is going further as people find it valuable and share it out. Um, so the average we found for our consistent high performers was 50,000 followers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not just about the number though. So if you had 50,000 followers who don't care about your content, it's not going to help you um, because Pinterest looks at that signal. When you send out your pin, it goes to your followers first. If they engage with it, then Pinterest will distribute it. If they don't, then Pinterest takes that as a sign that, ooh, this is, if their followers don't even like it, then like who else will like it? Well, I think the fact that I only have 1,700 followers is a perfect example and have... <sighs> all of those views. Oh yeah. Month. Yes. Likely your content is going much, much yeah. further than just your followers. And that is often the case. So that's congratulations. That's Mike converted and claimed my website yesterday. Also linked Instagram and my Shopify store. Never really thought about sharing my art on Pinterest. Oh my, yes, please do. That's fabulous. Good for you. And, and why, why is that good for artists? Why is it? Because people go on there to buy things. <laughs> Over 80%. 83%. You got it. Yep. Yeah. So here's another thing that we found uh, in that same group we looked at, the, the November and January pinners, that was 2 million pinners. We looked at those who are enjoying that consistently higher level of reshare. So they're, they're performing better than the other groups. Um, of that group, 80% had claimed their website. And so... So we also looked at the consistent lower performers and only 3% of those had claimed their website. Got it. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot you could kind of read into that, but it, it does indicate <laughs> that yeah. it's important. Right. And we can see why, because of this right here, you're going to get credit for your content um, and you're going to gain your, you're going to grow your engaged followers. So just do it. <laughs> so I'm going to, let me just pop up something. I popped mm. this up onto Pinterest. And I guess this is from uh, the Founder Institute, everybody. Okay. It's my favorite one liner, how to get your uh, value prop into one line. It has like a bajillion shares. Good. And because it was never on Pinterest, we'll have to talk a little bit about this. I get, I think that's probably one of the main reasons why I have such great stickiness on Pinterest. Um, and the Founder Institute isn't on Pinterest. So, because I know that sometimes I'll put a, a meme up that I think is so much fun and, and delicious and share it. Well, it's already popular on Pinterest. Mm, so okay. I am thinking maybe that's different than, because it wasn't my content. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure I totally follow. I mean, there is definitely something to be said for sharing new ideas on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. They love it. Users yep. love it. Um, it. But if you if you go in and look at your analytics, and this is probably true for everyone listening, if you look at um, your most popular content, so we could look at by impressions, saves, mm -hmm. link clicks, whatever is important to you, um, you're going to find that 
a lot of the ones in that top of the list were not saved by you. Right. So getting other people to share your content is super important, but, but when they do that, you've got to have, you got to get credit for it. <laughs> That's right. And so you have to have your business. You got to have your business account. You got to claim right. your site. Yes. Great. Do it. I Money was surprised e by that. folks. Yeah. yeah. 80%. And, okay. Go ahead. This is so good. Okay. Okay. So you also want to get rich pins because they increase engagement as well. So for most of us, that's going to be article rich pins. It will pull in some information from your site and they do seem to have higher engagement, which is cool. And all you have to do, if you just Google get rich pins for Pinterest and there, it's pretty easy to do, uh, but it pulls right from your site. If you are selling a product, you may want to look into product feeds. So this, um, this is much like a Google shopping feed and you can learn more at that bit.ly link as well. Um, but when you have a product feed, you will get a shop tag on your website, which allows everyone to very easily buy from you and to know that, okay, um, yeah, I can actually act on this pin. Uh, well, I just want to say, Melissa, how great is this? Oh my gosh. Uh, Does Melissa need this? <laughs> uh, well, she has a phenomenal business called Pirouette NYC. It's clothing. Oh. Holy mackerel. I love this view. And also for Laura with her phenomenal socially responsible EVOO Zaze. Oh. This cool. is going to be great for you too as well. This is going to be great information for you, Laura, for your beautiful olive oil. Yeah. So if you have a lot of products, You'll want to do this for sure. Um, and then that will also allow you to get a ver get verified merchant status, which is what this little check mark is about. And that allows you to show up in different places on Pinterest where people are more likely to purchase, which is very cool. So is that to hard to get? Is it hard to get the verified merchant? Does it, it take time? Be. Um, it doesn't take a lot of time, but <clears throat> it's more like, <coughs> excuse me. That's okay. You have to have things like, um, things you probably already have, like uh, use policy, uh, shipping policy, return policy. You have to have an email address that matches your domain. So like no Gmail addresses. Um, there are some, definitely some requirements. Uh, if, if you're trying to apply and having trouble, um, Pinterest has a community, which you may not be aware of, but it's community.pinterest it's dot net uh, com but if you just search pinterest community you can get in there and there's a really good thread about all the reasons people have been denied and how to like get everything in order before you apply because i think if you apply you have and you are rejected you have to wait a certain amount of time which is a pain um and it's not always clear why you've been denied so go get all those in order before you apply but um, that way you'll be able to have things like rich pins and product pins and shop tab and people will see, okay, this is somebody we can trust with our money. <laughs> yeah. And it's community.pinterest.biz, everybody. Let okay. me just sew that up on a banner. I'll just generate one real quickly um, so that uh, I can show you. Hold on. There we go. For okay. the biz, everybody. Okay. There you go. Excellent. It, it's good to know where to go for questions. I love it that. Is, it is community. That community is is helpful. People will help you out in there, and there there are moderators from <laughs> Pinterest as well. I have a quick question from Marcy Newman. Uh, oh. Elisa, is there a marketplace for digital products? Not yet, but That's a good question. Maybe soon. Um, Pinterest is really kind of into the big retail brands, so it seems like everything kind of is. Um, focus on that end of things. Uh, yeah, that's, that's Marcy of at the heart shift coast. Just want to say, but you can still throw it. digital products up. I mean, people sure can. can still, absolutely. There just isn't a marketplace for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, you might be able to do product tagging. So when you upload directly to Pinterest, there's an option to add a tag. Um, and then you I would try that and see what happens. You can um, you can enter the URL to your product onto the pin and then see if it will come up with a big shop button. Let me know what happens. All right. Okay. All right. So now we're going to get into some of that side of SEO with keywords. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more fun than it sounds like. So, <laughs> so the way to start is to kind of have your 
your major Google keywords in mind, but realize that they're going to, they're going to change, right? Because all these searches are unbranded. People are looking way higher up in the funnel for ideas and inspiration rather than a specific solution right now. So we can see this example if we entered in dresses, let's say you have a boutique. Um, what might be some good terms we could target? One might be dresses to run through a castle in. <laughs> I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'd wear that. Absolutely. I mean, now I've, I hadn't noticed that before. Now I kind of want to go searching. Um, so any of these that apply, definitely write them down. And then on some, on some accounts, sometimes you will get what we call guided search, where if you enter a very broad keyword term, it's going to pull up related terms for you. And so any of these that are appropriate for you as you want to write those down as well, because this is this is how Pinterest helps people shop, but it's also an indication to marketers that this is how people are shopping. This is how they're looking for addresses, which is cool. If you don't have this across the top, scroll down because a lot of times it's kind of in line on the page to get something very similar. Great. And as Melissa says, here, I'll just um, bring this back. Um, in her case, dresses to go from desk to date. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. You've put that context with it. There is another little secret in the ads dashboard. So if you go into ads and create an ad, we're not going to spend any money. But once we get to ads targeting, you can enter in your major keywords here and it will pull up all these results with lots of searches on them. You just click on the little plus that will be next to it. It'll drop it in here. Then you can copy and paste and you have a list. Wow. You'll never That's be without keywords. <laughs> They can also help you figure out like which ones would be better to target on Pinterest. What are people searching? So I'm going to pull up another question. That's a great question, um, Melissa, from Pirouette NYC, which is, does Pinterest allow for video posts? Oh, I'm just going to show off right now. Don't get angry at me, Nikki, because uh, <laughs> Nikki says she gets maybe nine views. I get, mm -hmm. on average, at least 2,000 to 5,000 views for every video snippet I put up. So after every show, everyone, I, I do a one minute video post-show promo. And I put oh. that on to Pinterest under the Startup Life Life board. And I, um, I, you know, I can't use a bit.ly link. So I've used the, the URL to my YouTube right now because I don't have it housed on my oh. website, the videos and the show. And then um, I might throw in, some hashtags within the content. I don't put it into where it says keywords, uh, Elisa, because um, they never, they rarely have anything for business unless it's education. Oh, you're talking about tags? Tags, yeah, the yeah. tags. Yeah, you know, hashtags are out again on Pinterest. They're out again? They're what out does again. that mean? That means don't use them. Okay, great. I know. So, it, yeah, it's hard to keep up. <laughs> yeah, I know. With all the, <laughs> let me just bring us both back. Yeah. with all the platforms, right, everybody? Oh, yes. my gosh, trying to keep up. But I mean, I think Melissa, I, I'm going to hop on and just see what the um, the show promo video that I put up for our conversation. I mean, I think it had like over 3000 views. That's it's cool. I'm gonna have to go check them out. And yeah. I, have, I have no idea, everybody. Yeah, it, uh, videos are <laughs> incredible. So we did, um, we did a data study of pins that had over 5,000 saves in January. So they went out in January and in January they had 5,000 or more saves. So people were repinning like crazy. Um, ended up with about 500 of those from the millions that we looked at. And of those so far, and I've been through about 300 of them, just looking at them, 30% um, of those are videos. So are they engaging? Yeah, they're, they're super engaging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those meal prep ones. Come on. Oh, I know. I, can, I know. Or, yeah, I can't get enough of those. I, I just, I do love those something fierce. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. They catch the eye too. Um, yeah. So another place you can go to find some related terms is in trends. If you haven't been to trends.pinterest.com, you want to go there. I love this tool. So for just for now, we're just talking about related terms. It will give you, okay, if I put in summer dress, it's going to tell me other things I might try. And that's Pinterest trends. So it's trends.pinterest.com. Okay. Trends. If we have time, we can do a little demo of it later because it's okay. so interesting. Okay. I love it. I'm just going to put that into the chat here. 
Yeah. Oh, it's too fun. Okay. So once you have your keywords, where do we use them? Uh, well, you're going to use them on your website, of course. <laughs> so Pinterest does look at your content about every 24 hours or so to, they want to see some continuity, right? So they want to make sure they're sending people to the right place. So it's a good experience. So try to use similar keywords between your content on your website or your product listing okay. and your pin. So on your pin itself, you're going to do on your pin title, your board name, um, your board title and pin just to pin description. Yeah everywhere right so your um glamorous wedding ideas pin is never going to go on your couches i want to buy <laughs> <board>. <laughs> because again pinterest wants continuity everywhere they're looking for every signal they can find um so they'll know what this content is and who to show it to in what searches so give them as many clues as you can um again it's similar to google but just a, a, not as hard to get your head around in my opinion um, well, I have a quick question. Yeah. Where, where is this pin description section? Yeah. So it's going to pull from different places. So this is a rich pin. Okay. I think oh, this I see part right saying. here is the rich pin. Got it. Uh, description. And this is probably the one that was entered manually. Okay. You know, it's always going to change, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm seeing what you're saying now. Yeah. So um, when they go and show it, they're going to show that title plus. This is what you see. This yeah. Is, yeah. Okay. But I'm, but I'm, I'm sneaking over to Pinterest, guys, and looking at my boards. Okay, but I will tell you, if you go in there and you see no description at all. That happens sometimes too. And yeah. people panic and they say, did Tailwind take my description away? No, Tailwind didn't take your description away. Um, and it's there, like we may not be able to see it and read it, but is there working for you for SEO? Okay, so this is if we are using Tailwind. No, anywhere. Anywhere. Okay, <laughs> but I'm just good. saying that when things go weird, people will think it's Tailwind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but really, it's just that they're they're kind of experimenting, trying things out all the time. But it, you can, if you were to, um, to view source, you could see that it's behind there. It's behind the scenes. It's still working for you. So don't give up if you don't see them. Like still do your keywords. Got it. Got don't it, use it. your hashtags. And you only have to write a couple sentences for it to work. Yep. And uh, Marcy has a great question too, which is wonderful. Is there a recommended length for the videos? Huh. Oh, for videos. Yeah, we're going to get to videos in a minute. Okay. Hang in there, Marcy. Yeah. We're going to get to this freebie gift too, everybody. So stay tuned. Okay, so we have our board names and descriptions just so we can visualize where they show up and how they work. Um, Christy Hill is never going to put anything in this board that doesn't have to do with Pinterest tips for bloggers because then Pinterest would be confused and it would hurt the distribution of her pins that go in there. Okay, so Elisa, yeah, hmm. now they're doing titles and descriptions. So it may not be a good thing that I'm using Andy Licious because how could Pinterest ever know what that means? I should probably start Real. off with first time I mean, founders or thinking about how people search, right? 97% of searches are unbranded. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you can make that decision for yourself. <laughs> yeah. I'll be, uh, I'll be changing my board names when we get done here today, everybody. Okay. Okay. I mean, Andy Licious is lovely, but nobody's going to be searching at least not at this stage in my career you know, life as a, <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter who you are, people. That's just not how people search on Pinterest. So <laughs> they're not going to do this, everyone. Andy Licious moment. I want to know. No. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, right? It's not about you. It's not about me. It's that's about right. the person themselves. So um, know. Like I've seen people try to take their Instagram, and and you can sometimes get away with, and it can work to post from Instagram to Pinterest. However, when I see things like here's a picture from our company party. And it's like, no, people don't care. They don't care about that here. They do care on Instagram. So keep doing that. That is not what they want here. They just want you to help them. <laughs> right. So if I, let's say, can I just bring a quick question up here? So yeah. anybody with a digital product, so here's my digital product, you know, um, my favorite questions for investors and investor questions that you need for when you're being uh uh, raising capital and pitching in front of investors. It's a download. Okay. So is that something that I can put up like that? Oh, yes, please. Okay. So here's an example right here from okay, Christy good. Hill. 
free Pinterest dashboard for Google Analytics. Uh, there are eBooks and right. webinars and all kinds of wonderful things you can find on Pinterest. This is very, very exciting. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I love Pinterest. Um, so pin titles are incredibly important, not just for SEO, but because they are visible in the feed and in search results. And a lot of times, if you, like, if you don't use any text on image, that's the only context people really have. Uh, the, the key here is to keep it exciting, actionable, make people want to click without saying click. If you put click in your title, Pinterest will not show people your pin, which is, they don't usually tell us things like that, but they were Say that one more time. If you put, if you put the word click in your title, Pinterest has said, and they ne like they never tell us things this explicitly. Yes. Don't use the word click because they won't show your pin. Um, it's also like clickbait does not belong on Pinterest. So if what if you know. use it in the description? That's fine. Okay, because I'm always saying click the link to watch That's the fine. whole episode. Okay, great. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't want it here. You want to okay. use this um, to give extra context. And you'll notice like this one here, and I think we should show it. Uh, yes, um, a little bit bigger here. They're not repeating, even though they have a lot of text over here, they're not repeating the same thing here. It should be additional to uh -huh. your pen. Yeah. All right, you designers, you getting that? What's in the, what's in the image? Should not be the title. Should not be part of your title. Oh, no, it's just a waste of space, really. That is, that is key. Where are we? 41 in this? Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. That's a good one. That's a good piece of advice right there. Okay. Yeah. And then, so here's an example. I was looking for funny socks. Um, these are adorable, right? So if you, if you look for like unicorn socks or rhino socks or funny socks right. or gift socks, like this is going to show up because they've done a good job with their SEO. Excellent. This is yep. so good. I agree so much, Eric. Pro Pinterest tips. We are all going to be rocking our, our Pinterest you are. You're Ready. You're ready. Yeah. Yep. So keep and them short. Mary, you've got great stuff to share on Pinterest. And, you know, not just the, the images, but things that can lead to, you know, products that you sell as well. Yeah. And um, Melissa wants to know, what does the ideal title look like? Um, so this is a really good one. Funny, save the, save the chubby unicorns, rhino gray socks. It's what the thing is right <laughs> or why you want to click like make your holidays brilliant who doesn't want to make a holiday brilliant if they're celebrating that holiday they yeah right yeah. so we can go back to these um like this is a good one too plus size preppy fall outfit oh that's um, great i'm already everybody distracted by these outfits i know sorry um uh, well, this is what happens that's why i have to set the timer on pinterest I know. Uh, this one here, fall women women's outfits, is kind of lacking, right? Yes. You want to give it some more like oof than that. Call All it your right. headline. It's your headline. Draw people in. But they don't have to be super long. Um, don't repeat what's in the image. You guys mm -hmm. got that. Looking at your descriptions, again, one to two sentences with keywords, oh, including your business name in the first sentence of the description leads to 54% higher conversion rate for email signups. And to me, Email signups is where Pinterest really shines because when you have people who are doing 97% unbranded searches, chances are they don't know you. Chances are they may not be ready to get their wallets out, but they may sign up for your email list and then you can sell to them. I mean, there definitely is direct sales going on in Pinterest, but Pinterest has a lot, should, should get a lot more credit for like that higher up in the funnel influence yes. on sales than it than it really does. So um, I've been trying that on our pins as well. Uh -huh. So oh, yeah, using, yeah. This is, you know, and I just, yeah, everyone, I, I, I don't know if you have Google Analytics on your website, but it's a phenomenal tool. Just go to Google, Google Analytics and walk you through if you need someone who's done a really great, um, the Idiot's Guide for Google Analytics, ping me, I'll send you a, a YouTube URL that I found of a guy who takes you through the process. But it is mind blowing how much traffic can come from Pinterest. And yeah. I'm excited to hear what everybody finds out. I'm gonna wanna do a follow up at some point to find out how you all are doing with your boards and the traffic because it, when you get them to your website, you can have all sorts of calls to action. Mm -hmm. Yep. And it's very exciting. I know, Nikki, you're picking up this one right here. They include your 
business name in the first sentence of the description. That's amazing. Yeah, this was from a study that Pinterest did a, a year and a half or so back of uh, a lot of promoted or Pinterest ads. So they had a high volume to look at. Um, and I think this one is really neat too, that using actionable wording and a strong call, strong call to action increases emails, email signups by 70%. Wow. And would that be in the um, the pin itself? This is in the pin description, but yeah. you can also put a nice strong call to action on the pin itself. So let's look at some of those. Okay, so here yeah. it is um, an adorable little set of pins that came up. I was searching for, I think, stationary ideas. Yeah. So, okay, why why would this come up? Well, for one thing, Pinterest likes to expand your search, right? So it's visual search and discovery. Right. So what they're going to show you isn't strictly just those keywords. They're going to look beyond. But also, look, they use the word stationary in their description. Perfect. Right. So think about what does this go with? <laughs> and so you can get your pins in those searches. That is terrific. I was cheating a little, everybody. I um, This is not going to look great on here, okay? but this was a pin because I don't have it formatted, but this is a pin here. And I can see where I need to fix this pin. I help women with their, their WeBank applications, but in my title, I'm not gonna say women business owners need help. You know, I'm not gonna use the word WeBank in my title. I'm probably gonna say things like, um, don't leave money on the table. Mm -hmm. um, or leverage your woman owned, you know, your woman owned status or something like that. But um, I just wanted to bring up that ex example, yeah. everybody on that, what you have on your, your pin image versus what you have in your title. I just wanted to go back to that for a quick second, Elisa. Okay. Very good. <laughs> um, Mike has a quick question before we move on. Okay. Um, I'm Elisa, sorry. I'm just getting nervous. We're not going to get through it. Okay. Oh, yeah, we are. Elisa, okay. love your art. What title and description would you use if you were selling them? Oh, my art. <laughs> oh, yeah. Picking your brain here. Oh, man. Okay. Yeah. If I were going to try to sell some of my paintings, so I do fluid art, um, yeah. and I'll share those videos on Instagram. I think I would go with some comment about the style. So, like, modern decor art. Okay. Something like that. Um, and I might include the color as well. All right. And I won't interrupt. Keep going. Oh, okay. We'll, we'll be good. And we want to get you into this too. <laughs> okay. So coming up with great ideas for Pinterest. So this is, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear this, but don't worry if you don't, you don't need to hear it. I'm going to put my microphone closer. Um, this is from Pinterest. Yeah, we're not hearing anything because you have to click the box. It's fine. Uh, you share. Yeah, it's fine. On, you don't need to hear it. It was on streamline. It was really about what was on the screen. Yeah. So, um, so creators, hey, 1,258,997 people are searching for banana ideas on Pinterest. Okay, so give us your ideas. Um, but we don't need any more banana bread ideas. <laughs> <laughs> which I think is hilarious, but they're serious, <laughs> right? They want new stuff. So they're showing us all these different things we can do with this content. Yes. Okay. So how, like, oh, how do you come up with an idea? <laughs> right? right. So there's a formula that Pinterest actually put out in their advertising guide. Um, and I have run with that thing like crazy. So if you want to see um, this formula plus a ton of different contexts you can add, it's at bit.ly uh, forward slash startup dash tailwind. Okay. It's just a little PDF you can grab. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of content or your product. So I grabbed this example, how to create a lead magnet. Okay, that's good. You can share that as a pin, but all right, I want to reach a different audience and I want to get into a different search. So who else or what other need could I fill? So we're going to take what we offer plus add some context to it. And in this case, we're thinking about someone wants to grow an email list. So we're going to turn that into a different pin, how to grow your email list with lead magnets. Got it. Okay, so same article. <laughs> 
<laughs> Same information, just with a very different twist. Uh, well, we love formulas, don't we, everyone? Uh, and you can, yes. you can oh, please. Yes, love this. Yep. This is phenomenal. So Everybody's going to be watching this a few times, I can tell oh, already. Good. That's cool. Um, so it's like, uh, how do I come up with a context, contextual mindset? Well, you can do it, but we also have a huge list. It's much longer than this one now yeah. at that bit.ly startup dash tailwind. So grab that. I love this formula. It allows you to get a lot more out of your content than just sharing one pin or like a couple pins with the same text on it. Cause that that's not always ideal either. Right. And thank you for the bit.ly link to, you know, yeah. all that scoops. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Alisa. My pleasure. Um, and so I want to save this for the end if we have time. Yep. Um, so Tailwind Create. Uh, I'm the Pinterest product specialist at Tailwind and last the last couple quarters or so I've been working with the Tailwind Create team and it is the most fun I've ever had because it is this tool that allows you to drop in your website address like your maybe your blog post address yeah. uh, it will pull in the title from your page it will pull in images from your page or you can use some of our stock photos or upload your own images and it will spit out thousands, I'm not even kidding, thousands and thousands of designs, and you can filter them. So there are a bunch of filters you can filter by like blog post, product post, um, how to, but this is the one that will help you come up with ideas about what's trending. So we follow the trends very closely um, at Tailwind. And so we have these suggested designs and you can tell this was from December. So there's a lot of holiday, there was uh, some, we're already Super Bowl was heating up. So if you're like, I don't know, what what to pin about right now. You can go into Tailwind Create, look at what's trending this month, and there are trends for every month, which is cool. Excellent. I just shared the URL, everybody, in the oh. uh, live chat, but I'll also have it in the show notes, okay? Cool. You know, when you can leverage an app like this, just like TubeBuddy or anything else you're using, it helps you so much. It's a, how much is the Tailwind app? Tailwind app is 119 a year yeah. annually. So and then, under 10 bucks a month. Yeah. And then with Tailwind Create, you get 15 free pin designs uh, per month. And then there are packages above that. But the thing is, like, if you're not a Tailwind member and you go in and get a trial, no credit card required, you get 100 free pins to schedule, you can still use Tailwind Create every month and use 15 free designs until the end of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, 15 free images. It's such a win. But remember, marketing is investing, everybody. Yes, and, you know, too. for 10, under $10 a month, you're going to get so much added value and reach the people you want and get the conversions you want. I love that. Thank Absolutely. you, Lisa. You're welcome. Uh, the other thing I love inside of Tailwind for coming up with ideas is Tailwind Communities. So this is a, where a group of people come together and they put in their best content. <clears throat> and then people oh. share out if they feel like it. You don't have right. to. Oh, no, that's so supportive, though. I love yeah. that. Adding yeah. wind to everybody's sales. That's right. And really on Pinterest, um, sharing your own content, getting your own content out is really going to give you the tangible results. Yeah. But like you said, people like to share. They like to support their friends. And this gives you insight into what are people sharing? So here's this post here. Do you have a sales funnel strategy in your business? For some reason, 953 shares. So is it the topic? Is it the design? What is it? Go in there and figure out why are people sharing this and can I do something similar? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Because this platform delivers in significant yeah. trackable ways. I mean, to at least for me, it just, it, it just, you can add the numbers and see the data. Ah, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, I, I was with Tailwind long before I joined the team uh, with my marketing agency. And if you wanted if you wanted Pinterest support, um, you had to have Tailwind because I just couldn't do it without it. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So let's talk briefly about making pins that people can't resist. So the general principles are visually appealing, though I have to say, Andy, some of my really ugly pins have done very well. <laughs> Uh, create original ideas. We talked about that with the banana bread. Yeah. Keep things positive. Um, that kind of FOMO or clickbait or um, it, it just doesn't work. It just yeah. doesn't work on Pinterest. Keep it relevant so people feel like they can do this thing and drive people to action, which is also going to help with your traffic. That's great. Always use branding. If you do nothing else, add branding. It increases conversions. Um, people know it is actionable, not just something somebody uploaded. 
Uh, use a call to action in the image and description. So you asked about that. Yes, absolutely use a call to action if it's applicable. Wonderful. Keep it consistent. If I see something in your image, I want to buy it on your website. Don't make me go looking for it. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> right? Oh, that's good. <laughs> or if I want an idea, I want it now. I don't want to go to the homepage and search for it. That's something that a lot of very yeah, be new sure to have a link do. in there so people can go and grab it. Yeah, and not just at the homepage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then with consistency, how often do you have to pin on Pinterest yeah. to keep uh, relevant? So Pinterest wants you to create new content on your website once a week okay. and pin that, but uh, there's definitely room to do more, Got <laughs> more it. than that. Uh, and they would like you to not schedule it or pin it all at once, right? So they'd right. rather have a slow trickle than a mm -hmm. barrage. They've said that several times. Um, leaning into those seasonal events and everyday moments. So with that PDF, you're going to get that formula. So adding your product or service to what matters to a certain group of people now right. um, can lead to 20% higher sales, which is fabulous. Um, and so on individual pins, like if it's an item, use call outs to make sure people don't miss what's so cool about this thing. Um, use your branding, but don't be afraid to experiment. So <laughs> I, I'm doing this at Tailwind. We have two designers who um, I'm calling as a celebrity mashup, Christine. Kieran, and Justine, and they make beautiful pins. Um, but I decided to use Tailwind Create to make some more pins. Yeah, and what <laughs> did you learn? <laughs> I learned. I'm so sorry, Christine, but the pins I'm making with Tailwind Create are doing way better than anything else. Wow. There's it's nothing like those experiments, right, everyone? I know, and I think it's because um, our branded pins are so branded yeah. that people are kind of used to them. And these are, look different. This must be from someone else. It's working. It's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. So the most successful pin copy, clear, concise, actionable. This is a perfect example. It's also a great image that has that uses both a lifestyle image and a product photo together. This is kind right. of a perfect pin. Include people or pets. Used to be don't include people. Um, and then when I say include people, I don't mean me. <laughs> <laughs> me. or yourself uh, yeah like people selfie. if they're gonna read about pinterest they don't need to look at my face right, right. <laughs> they want right. to look at someone successful with what i'm teaching them instead so good use testimonials don't see many of them on pinterest they work everywhere so try them on pinterest um use a lifestyle um, setting can i just say about the testimonials real quickly yeah um i actually have a testimonial board i created for when i need sharing up you know, founders, you always need Jerry oh. to remember why, you know, um, all the great things that people have said um, to you. So I just putting that out there. That's really You can great. keep it now, private, everybody. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're going to do that, what I would do is first save that pin to a keyword relevant board. Okay. Like if it's about um, business startup services, mm -hmm. save it there first, right? Okay. And then save it to your secret board for yourself when you need it. <laughs> So first time your pin goes out, that is that is the most uh, impactful. In fact, we're, we're noticing again in this data study um, that the first time your pin goes out will account for 70% of the saves you'll get on it. Wow. It doesn't mean you can't share it again. Um, you get about, you know, 30% of the total engagement from those re repinnings or those saves. But that first time is super important. So make sure it goes to the relevant board. I love those testimonial ideas, though, on, on a product, just like a pin like that. Boom. Yeah, yeah easy. So easy. So easy. You could set up a, a, a favorite in Tailwind Create and have them so you could just drop in the new text yeah. whenever you want. Use a lifestyle setting. Doesn't have to be fancy, but it does work a lot better than just a product image. Wow. And so tell a story. Draw people in with that story. You can do that. Yes. Okay, video. Video. Okay. So like I said, we looked at, at the pins that we're getting, they got 5,000 or more saves in January. That's a ton of saves. And that was just in their first month of existing and 30% are video. So uh, video can be very intimidating for people, but this one here has a photo. It has comments. It has 752 reactions. Um, and what I found in looking at those pins with 5,000 or more saves is that 89% of them had a combination of reactions, photos, and comments. So this pin, I guarantee you, is doing really well. 
just look at how simple it is. There's not even any oh sound. Oh my gosh. Like, could you do this? I mean, obviously none of us here are selling lava lamps, but it's just, <laughs> it's so easy. And the other thing we found is the videos that are getting that crazy number of saves um, are like this. They are step-by-step -step, a how-to and a ridiculous number of them are TikTok videos. Wow. So you could repurpose your TikTok video <laughs> yes. on Pinterest. Yes. Now the one thing this, this one did um, was they put in a cover photo, yeah, which I think also helped to give it some context. Sure. Yeah. So video. Yes. Please which is very video. easy to do when you're editing. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> Anyone could do this. I could do that even. I just have to borrow a child. Okay. So just kind of buzzing through these so pictures good. with many Thank colors. You, we, I, we, we're doing great. You're, you're, okay. Okay. Yeah. We're great. Okay. So use multiple colors. Yep. They tend to work better on Pinterest. This one with the Fritos. I don't care about Fritos, but that image, I see it all the time and I love it. It's beautiful. Um, these over here tend to blend in. Um, you might try something monochromatic if it's mm -hmm. really eye catching like this, but generally speaking, use multiple images and color. I love and that color. Yes. Make sure that your products are highlighted front and center. So if we're here um, selling suitcases, it is very obvious to me and to anyone else who looks at it, what this is about. It's about this piece of luggage here. The other thing is Pinterest also is reading your image. Uh, they can see what's in it. So they're seeing a lawn chair. They're seeing probably a plant, but they are definitely seeing a suitcase. A suitcase. And when they see that, they attribute keywords to this pin as well. Wow. There's yeah. so much to this. I know. Isn't it cool? They're it's so, so cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, so definitely do that. Um, when taking your photos, this is too light. This is too dark. This is just right. So we want a more of a natural look on Pinterest. Got it. This one in the middle. Um, that's one of my old pins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling on myself. It's terrible. Okay. So some of the things you want to look out for, um, remember I said that finance can do very well on Pinterest. Well, here is an ad from bank of America, uh -huh. way too much text on it. Not enough contrast. Can't read it. They're spending money on it. That is sad. Yes. Got it. Good. Yeah. Thank you for that review. You're welcome. Uh, this one here, what kind of blog should I start? Um, this is a create and go. It is not beautiful. However, no. The contrast is insane, and I see it all the time. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Oh, my yes. Um, I mean, would I rather have people say, oh, that's beautiful, and pass by or go, oh, what kind of blog should I start? I would take the latter. Um, this one here is showing what Pinterest is reading on your pin. So they can read the text on your pin. Um, it's not the strongest SEO signal, but like, I'll take all I can get. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they're showing what they can read and what they can read is everything except for very one very important word letter. They cannot read the B. Oh, because it's too fancy schmancy. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. So if you want that extra boost, keep your fonts very easy to read for everyone. Right, row. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you can use your fancy fonts in your, uh, right. you know, words that are not keywords in or logo, just, yeah. or like just use them if you want to. Yeah. Just know. Yeah. You just know. Okay. Uh, this one over here is a still shot. I wish I had the video. Um, mm. Someone sent it to me and said, okay, this pin is getting a ton of saves and a lot of traffic, but no sales. And I was like, sales, what are you talking about? <laughs> what's, to, what's, what's to sell? Right. And, to me, it looked like a video learning how to wood burn uh, a wooden turntable. It was not. It was for ordering custom turntables. But there's nothing in the video that would tell you that. So context. Tell people what they it's can do. Key. Key. Because it's a cool video, but oh it's never going to work. <laughs> Now, you know, a lot of my viewers are on-demand viewers, and I know that you're sitting here and you're watching this right now. Can we just send Elisa just so much good energy and heartfelt thanks because, oh my gosh, um, you, you know, she's not going to know because this, unless you sign up for the freebie, which let me just pop it up real quickly here. Um, 
so I can catch a few more folks. This is the freebie, the Pinterest quick start, begin marketing on Pinterest in one hour. It has everything you need. I'll be adding this link into the show notes, but you can QR scan as well right there. Grab your camera and take a quick shot of that to get her freebie. And Elisa, I'll be sharing it with the community post show too, because this is this is exactly what everybody's been looking for. Oh, I'm so glad. You, it you know, really this is. is. Like, here is your theory, and then go do it with a quick start. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, I'm excited to see if anybody tries it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, you can count on it. Go okay. ahead. Inspiration. Great. Inspiration. We all need inspiration sometimes. This <sighs> is the best account, in my opinion, to follow for that inspiration. Pinterest Creative Gallery. That's a Pinterest account. And that's all it is, is just beautiful pins curated by Pinterest creative strategy team. So it's all divided up by industry. You will find something in here that will make you go, oh, this is my next pin idea. See, and that's what we need to toggle that inspiration and creativity. Yep, because it you just can't get it from nowhere some days. <laughs> uh, I will also sometimes Google magazine cover images and then just uh, put in the industry that I'm working on. Um, oh my gosh. Well, yeah, like it makes Good a idea. very modern pin design. Um, yeah. So obviously yes. you don't have all this text on it, but I just, I've gotten some cool ideas that way. Another way is to search your keyword and look at the color. It's all orangey, yellowy, brown. <laughs> <laughs> so Andy, are you going to make an orangey, yellowy, brown pin? No. No, you're not. I am not. <laughs> No, you're not. Okay. Very good. Got the point. Stay Stand away out. from that. <laughs> yes. Um, of course, my favorite is Tailwind Create. So here are just some quick ideas that popped up when I dropped in some images and I sorted by product. So it pulled yeah. up the images that would work best for that. Um, if you can't find something you don't you you like in there, well, I don't know how to help. <laughs> <laughs> just so many. Okay. So publishing pins fast, we've got some great pins. You can schedule on Pinterest up to two weeks in advance. So some people like to do that. You can certainly do that. Uh, of course, I'm partial to Tailwind and have been for a yes. very long time. Yes. Um, it uh, The smart schedule looks at your followers and when they're most likely to be on the platform and engaging and will suggest those time slots for you. And we already kind of talked about why that's important. Pinterest wants Love to see that. your followers engaging and they want to see them do it pretty quickly. So if you can kind of time it right, that's super helpful. That is so good. Yeah. I didn't build it. So I won't I know, take credit. No, I, <laughs> and they're always, and of course it changes all the time. Your, your followers are going to change. And so the yeah, app is going to go. Yeah, yeah. It's going to mm, love yep. that. Yep. Me too. Uh, you can also use our browser extension to save pins from anywhere, including your own website, which is cool. Yay. And you can schedule within Tailwind drafts. Uh, so you can just it's upload save photos. so much time. Yeah, it is. Uh, the best thing though is Tailwind Create. So you schedule, you create your images here. Mm -hmm. When you hit, you can download them so you can use them on your blog if you want to. Yeah. Then when you hit go schedule, they all pop up here. <sighs> It's so, so fast. And, so, and folks, see, that means you can just put a, a lot of time, you know, schedule time for your Pinterest post, yeah. you know, so that you have things ready to be put into the feed. Yes, absolutely. And the, another thing that we found, and I'm going to, I'm going to pull up this note so I get, <laughs> I yeah. get it right. So um, let's see. Hey. So we looked at all the pins that went out in in January, the, yep. every pin that went out uh, from Tailwind. And we found that creating a new pin using Tailwind Create resulted in 373% more saves than resharing existing content. Okay. I'm going to put that in right here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. 300 and some, 300 and what percent? 373 Oh my God. So what's That's going amazing. on here are a couple of things. One is that, you know, we designed these, all these designs with best practices in mind and that you can filter for what you're, you're promoting. Mm -hmm. The other factor is something we already talked about how that first time your pin goes out tends to get 70% of those saves or those engagements. So if, if you're sending out new images, 
you're going to get much better results than yeah. if you just keep resharing the old stuff. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So another thing we found is that uh, through user calls, people said it takes me about 15 minutes to make a pin image using Photoshop, Canva, easel, whatever they're mm -hmm. using. With Tailwind Create, our CEO, Danny, did a bunch of data pulls, and he was able to see the time people spend on Tailwind yeah. Create images. Would you like to guess how long? If, if everybody else, every other platform or every other solution was 15 minutes, how long would Tailwind Create be? I don't know. I can't because, I mean, I get lost on Canvas, so I'm not the right person to ask, but I would just assume 10 minutes? 1.8. <laughs> 1.8 minutes per pin design with Tailwind oh, Create. Oh my God. I That's worth the 10 bucks right there. I know. I feel like I, sp I probably spend like three or four maybe because still, I like to go nothing. tweak. I change the colors. I change the yeah. text. I add a call to action. Uh, but yeah, 1.8 minutes or three minutes. And it's oh. the right size. It has the right look. It has the right SEO. It has the right everything. Yeah, it has the right everything. And then it lands in your drafts. So, Oh my gosh. I love yeah. that 50 drafts to schedule. Ooh, so <laughs> I know easy. because I'd been playing with Tail and Create. That's why. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just, that's content, everybody. <laughs> it's content. That's right. Okay. So we want more people to share. We talked about if you look in your analytics, I'm betting you that the top pins that are out there were not anything that you saved yourself. It's probably somebody else. Okay. Mine has kind of switched now because of those Tail and Create pins. But in general, it's not what I pin. All right. Use our Pinterest hover save button. Okay. That puts a little button on every image that when people hover over it, they can pin it. I have that. That's how I save oh. everything. Excellent. Uh, Milo Tree. So when it comes to followers and engaged followers, encourage your existing audience to follow you. I love this plugin for WordPress. Um, and I, I love Jillian, who makes it with her with her husband. Um, but you can use it to get people to follow you on Pinterest, on Instagram. And I think that they're there are others, um, but the people who yeah, are already so on your website, cool. yeah. yeah, those are the people who are going to engage with your content. So it's like win-win all around. Yeah. yeah, tasty pins. Okay, so a lot of people are like, I don't want this big tall image on my blog post. Okay, that's fine. You can hide it. So when someone clicks one of your social share buttons, all of those nice pin images will show up. You're kidding. Okay. Not kidding. Love it. Tasty pins. Oh my gosh. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay. It's a great tip. <laughs> it's, my, it's a great tool. Okay. And then Tailwind Communities, of course, can help people find your content. The thing that surprised me about Tailwind Communities is how many Pinterest bloggers and marketing bloggers are out there that I did not know before. <laughs> so now if I need like a content collaboration, I can find people in my community. Oh, There's a kidding. chat too. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Great. And again, it's, it's adding wind to everybody's sales, everyone. Yes. Okay. Just quickly how to measure your Pinterest marketing success. I really simplified it down <laughs> to just a couple. <laughs> of One of them is Tailwind Top Pins Report. Uh, and this is, all right, Pinterest analytics are fantastic. Um, however, they're rather complicated. But uh, this Top Pins Report is fabulous. It also gives you the save rate and click rate. And like I was saying, this is not me. Jeff C pinned my my pin that is giving us the most clicks in this time period. Um, Manly Pinterest, everybody. Jeff C. <laughs> we love him. <laughs> yeah, he's all right. <laughs> <laughs> in this account here, <laughs> pin the next one. You know, so I'm not seeing Tailwind till down here. Um, wow. But anyway, you want to know what's bringing in your traffic? Wow. Now is this? Can we? Can we? Okay. So we get. Is this on Pinterest? These it's analytics. This and these are in tailwinds. Tailwind. Okay, good. Good to know. Yep. And then this one is on Pinterest. So all right. Um, the way you get to it is to go to analytics overview yeah. mm -hmm. and then change the drop drop down to I think it's now outbound clicks, actually. It's okay. changed from link, link clicks. Uh, and it will show you basically the same information. Um, but it will show you the link click rate, but it won't show you the save rate. So Tailwind does that for you. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. And then Google Analytics. Um, if you're gonna use Google Analytics for this, just realize that if you're comparing Pinterest and Google Analytics, they will never match. Just come to peace with this. Yes, yes. <laughs> it okay doesn't matter. It. It's still gonna be 
So in more significant than anything you're going to get from Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, but you still want to do it. Right. And so yeah. if you're going to use Google, Google analytics for this, you can go the hard way or you can get Christy Hill's dashboard, which I highly recommend. Okay. Um, anything about that, which is really hard to get anywhere else that I've been able to find is that it will show you the actual pin ID. Yep. So a lot of times what we see is like an aggregate of, okay, all the pins to this content got you this result. This will actually show you like this individual pin yep. gave you this result. So um, that's that. christyhill.com forward slash. Thank you, Pinterest. Christy Hill. No kidding. Yes. On pin analytics. So anything you pin, whether it's your content or someone else's, will give you on pin analytics. However, <laughs> if you follow them for any length of time, you will notice that impressions go up and they go down and they go up and they go down. They should never go down um, <laughs> because um, now we have lifetime impressions on videos. Uh, I ran a test because there is some talk in the marketplace that using a third party scheduler could be hurting impressions. People get really hung up on this impression number. So I wanted to see, is that true? So I ran an experiment myself um, and now we've been pulling um, numbers yeah. from individual accounts so we can see, is that true? It's not true. Hooray. Um, hooray. However, this impression number is wonky. <laughs> so for instance, I could pin my pin on a Monday uh -huh. and by Tuesday it would say, okay, you have 215 impressions. So I'm still looking at a 30 day time period here. The next day it would tell me I had 85 impressions. And you're like, what is that yeah. possible? Or is not possible. So try not to rely on these. These are like a, an estimate, a snapshot. Yeah. What you want is the other stuff. So like I see people really get very hung up on this and spend too much time. So on it. don't worry about on pit analytics. Look at more yeah. the big picture. <laughs> I know Got they're it. addictive and fun and easy, but yeah. Yeah. Can't count on it. Okay. Ooh, ooh, so ooh, ooh. this so is important. This is important. What's healing? And this is the wrong link. What did I do, Andy? Oh, no. I will give you the right link. Here, yes, we'll just I put will. it like this for a second. So yeah, you can at least it can get the, <laughs> this happens to all of us okay, all the let time. Me, let me get out of here. How about I do that? I'll get out there of here. There you go. Yep. And then um, stop screen. I updated everything except for that last last slide and melissa went and got me a beautiful thank you and everything well, meantime i'm just going to pop this up because yeah. you're going to want to grab this pinterest quick start begin marketing on pinterest in one hour you'll learn how to set up a pinterest account optimize it effortlessly create gorgeous images and schedule your first batch of pins in 60 minutes hello <laughs> that's what you need and you know what? I think you could do it in a lot less time. <laughs> well, honestly, <laughs> I but, just didn't want, you know. I know. But it, and, and for those of you who are so good at creatives, because I see what you do on Instagram and, and other locations, and especially for the e-commerce sites who are pulling this information from your website. Oh, my gosh. I'm thinking about you, Peachbox Co. You know I am. I see you on there. This is going to take you up another level and get those folks to your website because it's so easy to pin. I use that little P, I have it right in Chrome, I have a Chrome extension. Yeah. So I'm on anybody's post that I think is gonna be relevant for my audience. I just click that P, choose an image, and I post it on one of my boards. It's that easy. And you know, it's gonna help somebody else have more luck at it. Okay, so we've got, here we go. I'm just going to put this up right here really on a link. banner, everybody. <laughs> Create a banner. Boom, bidi, bing. Bum, da, da, dum. And we will show that banner. There it is. There and then, of course, I'll pop you. it right into the uh, chat room as well for anybody who is still hanging in there live with us. Again, we understand it's on demand. So I'm going to have chapters, you know, I'll put the chapters on YouTube and you'll be able to zoom through this and get all this great information. Thank you for that tailwind. I'll definitely either me or my, my gal, Nikki will be definitely signing up for that and um, taking advantage of that because Pinterest has been very, very good to me. Oh, good. You know, I can't tell you how many times people will say, I think I'm ready to market on Pinterest. And I'll say, well, why is that? Why now? And they'll be like, 
because I was looking at my Google Analytics. I don't do anything on Pinterest, but it's still sending me all this traffic. So right. I thought, if I do something on Pinterest, maybe it will send more. Yes, that's very, very smart. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And I know that we'll find eventually, oh, hey, we've got someone hanging in there still with us. Yay, Mary Ann B. Would it make sense to pay for advertising on Pinterest? It can. So I do a very a good question, it. Mary. Yeah, Bate. it's a matter of um, of return on investment all, all the time, right? So uh, yes, you can sell products on Pinterest. Um, we you see them, yeah, in yeah. your threads, you'll see them yeah. promoting. You, you decide, right? You have to figure out what it's worth to you. So there's kind of a little formula you can do with that, right? Like what is what is the conversion rate of this page? Right. Right. I, what what is it I worth to that. For conversion? Yeah, yeah, I practiced and, it. So it's like for affiliates, no, it's not worth it's not worth it to to advertise to a blog post that has affiliate links. No, <laughs> but for services and for products, it can be. You just gotta yeah. just gotta do the math. Yep, yeah, and and do the experiment, showing that here's the investment here. How many people clicked on the pin? How yeah. many then landed on your website? How many then, you know. Right. has to be on your email list and how many from that no. i mean it's an excel spread or an air table sheet yeah. right there but i will say um if you just want to dip your toe in and try it i would try conversion campaigns they used to be called traffic campaigns um Ooh. the actual con uh what no, it's consideration campaign it used to be traffic okay conversion campaigns are really good for tracking results but you got to really commit to them for several weeks at quite a good budget. So I, like I would definitely try a consideration. Um, and we find that we get much better results with retargeting than using interests and keywords, but we feed our retargeting groups by running very inexpensive keyword and interest ads. So awesome. Ugh. How exciting is this everyone? Alisa, come on. I mean, you gave us so much to work with, and this is going to be valuable for so many people for years to come. Okay. So. <laughs> no, seriously, because this Great. is a, a platform that I don't think first, you know, think about all the SaaS apps out there, right? They need to be marketing. They need to, yes. you know, pull things. They've got to have things on their website. They've got to keep the interest going. Pinterest really works. Everybody, you know, for me, it's been a, just a no brainer. And I'm always like, what? When I see the results. That's great. <laughs> here. And I'm so glad you came on and shared with the, with everybody here because, um, you know, this is, I'm always talking about it, but the fact that you carved out all this time to give all this incredible information. And I apologize to everybody that we went long, but it's Pinterest, you know, it's not, you know, this kind of marketing doesn't Sorry. happen <laughs> overnight, but yeah, we don't care here at the Startup Life Live Show because this is evergreen content and it is so very, very important. I'm going to pull up uh, Elisa's banner. I didn't have it up for a while there because I just wanted everybody to be able to focus on her slides, but really reach out. I'll have all the details in the show notes to connect to Elisa. And I will share with everybody who was here live and you know, you'll be watching this evergreen, the incredible offer for that one hour training, video training to get you up and running quickly. And then the fabulous offer for the discount on using Tailwind. Already it's a discount because if you're doing Canva, you know, you're paying a 10, about 10 bucks a month. If you're two buddy, nine bucks a month, you know, these are the important investments you're making to make your life easier or someone who's working for you easier. So you're spending less money on it, perhaps their wages, if they're hourly and you're out, outsourcing it, or your own time, which is so valuable. And um, I just want to thank you so much, Elisa, for joining us. Thank you, Andy. It was really fun in your it audience. Was great. Great, <laughs> great, great, great. We'll be hearing from them for quite a while. I'm going to pop myself into the um, full screen here and just say a quick goodbye, and then I'll see you in the green room. Everybody, that was so amazing. I am so in love with the experience that we had here. I'm just going to say a quick goodbye and a heartfelt thanks that you tuned in and upped your founder game with this amazing platform, Pinterest. We uh, we went long, but it was absolutely worth it. You're going to be coming back here and checking in. I know you will be. I know I will be. So I, above all, am so grateful. And anybody who's still here at the end, if you didn't catch it earlier, yay, scan that code. 
get that freebie right there and get started. As we uh, wrap up here, I just want to remind everybody, you phenomenal first time founders, please always remember you're braver than you believe. Yep. You're stronger than you seem. And oh yeah, you're smarter than you think. You've got this everybody. <laughs> Until next time. Mwah! I'm so grateful. Keep going. You're amazing. See you on the next time. <laughs>